Hallelujah. Welcome to church. Hallelujah. It's a privilege to be alive. Praise God. It's a privilege to be alive. You know, can we put our hands together for the choir? Hallelujah. May God bless you more. They preached the message already. They preached the message already. Starting from when Brother Gwenga started. Prayer of encouragement was what he prayed. And they sang a song that said, Nothing else can satisfy apart from the Lord. Praise the Lord. So I'm sure if you guess one, two, three times, you get what I'm going to talk about. Encouragement. Praise God. Encourage yourself. That's what I want to talk about. Thank Pastor for the grace and the privilege to bring the word. The grace of Pastor is in the house. The grace of Pastor Adewe is in the house. And above all, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ is in the house. Praise God. Irrespective of what you're going through in life, you must learn to encourage yourself in the Lord. Irrespective of what is confronting you in life, you must learn by yourself to encourage yourself in the Lord. In the midst of a world full of lies and failures and injustice and insecurity, you need to learn to encourage yourself in the Lord. So you don't get depressed. Praise God. To maintain your mental sanity, you need to learn to encourage yourself in the Lord. To lock down your testimonies, you need to learn to encourage yourself in the Lord. To lay hold on the blessings to come, you need to learn to encourage yourself in the Lord. Praise the Lord. First John 5 19. First John 5 19. We know that we are of God, and the whole world lies under the sway of the wicked one. Praise God. Do you see the contradiction? We are children of God, but the whole world is influenced by the wicked one. That is why you need to encourage yourself in the Lord. Praise the Lord. So in spite of the contradictions on earth, learn to encourage yourself in the Lord. We are living in a world where what is good is considered evil. And what is evil is called good. It can be depressing. So you need to learn to encourage yourself in the Lord. Praise the Lord. America's system is programmed to take from you. The system of America is programmed to take, take, take. They don't give back. Praise God. The system of America is programmed to ruin your marriage. The system of America is programmed to sway your children away from the path of faith. The system of America is programmed to steal your productive time. That is why you've got to learn to encourage yourself in the Lord. Praise God. That is why we have to fall back on godly encouragement just to make it on a daily basis. There was a time before I go to work on Sunday night, I had to psych myself up with the word of God. Because people just did not like me. did not like me. I had to encourage myself every Sunday night because I was going into warfare. These guys don't know my parents. These guys don't know my story. I've never hurted them when they just don't like me. How can you see, how can you not like a stranger? How can you hate a stranger? You don't know him or her and you hate that person. So because of the things we face, see, the Bible says we are like sheep in the midst of wolves. You have to learn to encourage yourself. Praise the Lord. You are your best cheerleader. Nobody can encourage you like you. Don't wait for your wife. Don't wait for your children. Don't wait for Pastor Sam. You are your best cheerleader. King David was his best cheerleader. He encouraged himself many times all through scripture. Psalm 42 verse 5. Psalm 42 verse 5. Don't wait for your manager to encourage you. 
Don't wait for your neighbor to encourage you. Don't wait for your siblings to encourage you. They have to encourage themselves anyway. Praise God. Why art thou downcast? Why art thou cast down, O oh my soul? Why are you sad, O oh my soul? Why are you lonely? Why are you feeling depressed? Why are you feeling frustrated? Why are thou disquieted in me? And he encouraged himself, Hope thou in God. For I shall yet praise him for the help of his countenance. Praise God. David was downcast. He had to nurse himself with encouragement out of discouragement. He had to nudge himself with encouragement out of frustration. You are your best encourager. Praise God. Job was his best encourager. Praise the Lord. Job 13 verse 15. His friends gave him useless advice. <laughs> and some, some wisdom. Some wisdom spiced with lies. Praise God. But he had to learn to encourage himself. Though he slay me, yet will I what? Will I trust him? Not only will I trust him, I will maintain my own ways before him. I will stay in Christ. I will stay in God. That is what he's saying basically. What are the benefits of encouragement? We have more than this. But encouragement strengthens you. Encouragement is strength, period. It's strength. Encouragement is not weakness. And when we are encouraged, we are prepared to go forward. When we are encouraged, we are prepared to move forward and accomplish great feats. Encouragement prevents situations from getting worse. And encouragement avoids worse situations. Someone said, correction does much, but encouragement does more. Praise God. Correction does much, but encouragement does more. So encouragement is better than correction. Parents, have you seen you correct your kids, you correct your kids, you correct your kids, you spank, 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 and your fingers are pain you. But try encouraging them. You will see the difference. Amen. Encouragement is better than correction. Hallelujah. Encouragement is like the sun after the rain shower. Praise God. Encouragement revitalizes us. Encouragement empowers our body, soul, and spirit to move forward and not be stagnant. Encouragement strengthens us to move forward and not be dwelling in self-pity. Encouragement inspires us to be courageous and confident no matter the situation confronting us. Praise the Lord. Mark 10, 47 to 49. Mark 10, 47 to 49. Mark 10. Thank you. And when he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to cry out, speaking about the blind man. And he said, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Then many warned him to be quiet. Many discouraged him. Praise God. Many discouraged him. Be quiet. Jesus doesn't need you. But he cried out all the more, Son of David, have mercy on me. Jesus stood still and commanded him to be called. And the same people that told him, be quiet, they told him, be of good cheer, be encouraged, for he collects you. Hallelujah. May God stand still for you today. In the name of the Lord Jesus. May God turn those who are discouraging you to begin to encourage you. In the name of the Lord Jesus. So encouragement precedes a lifting up. He was blind. He was being discouraged. But they told him, cheer up. Be encouraged for he called you. And Jesus healed him. So encouragement precedes miracles. Hallelujah. So encouraging yourself propels you to breakthroughs. 
miraculous breakthroughs, encouragement, not complain. Said it many times before on this altar. Encouragement, not complain. Why do we need to encourage ourselves? Because although our citizenship is in heaven, our body lives on earth, a fallen world, a corrupt world. Bible says the whole earth is full, is covered in darkness. Do you understand? Though our citizenship is in heaven, your body functions in this corrupt world where there is injustice, where there is hardship, where there are lies and deception, where there are struggles. So you need to encourage yourself all the time. Because your body is dealing, is dealing with these things on earth. No matter how spiritual you are. Praise God. No matter how spiritual you are, you are in the traffic every now and then, right? Those are delays. Those are frustrations. Hallelujah. Amen. We have to encourage ourselves because even though we are citizens of heaven, we are still dealing with the consequence of Adam's disobedience. If I see that man called Adam, I'm going to hold his ears and twist it. Hallelujah. Hebrews 3.13 Hebrews 3.13 Hebrews 3.13 Why do we need to encourage ourselves? Thank you. But encourage one another daily. But exhort one another daily. So long as it's called today. So that none of you may be hardened by sin's deceitfulness. So that you do not confirm, conform to the failures and the, you know, the, the, the inequalities on earth so that you do not accept it. The disappointment on earth, the losses on earth, so that you do not think is normal. You have to encourage yourself on a daily basis. So that you do not, you are not deceived to begin to think that losses is your portion or disappointment is your portion. You have to always encourage yourself in the Lord. Hallelujah. If you are going to push back evil, if you are going to repel evil, like the heroes of faith did, you have to encourage yourself in the Lord. If you are going to stop the mouth of lions, like the heroes of faith did, you have to learn to encourage yourself in the Lord all by yourself. Praise God. If you want to exercise dominion on earth, you know, pastor tells us all the time, he says, I have seen something that is wicked on earth. Sons are walking on feet and sat out on horseback. If you don't want to ride, walk on feet as a son, even though you are a son, son of the most high God, walking on feet and suffering, you need to learn to encourage yourself with the word of God. Praise the Lord. So I just have few nuggets here. There are so many, but I just have few nuggets here on some spiritual truths. Some spiritual truths on some spiritual truths that will encourage us. Some spiritual truth that will encourage us. Praise God. Number one spiritual truth. Your everlasting father is the God of all comfort. Praise God. Our heavenly father is the God of all encouragement. 2 Corinthians 1, 2-5. 2 Corinthians 1, 2-5. Blessed be the God and father of our Lord Jesus Christ. The father of mercies. And God of all comforts. Some versions will tell you. God of all encouragement, who comforts us in all our tribulation, that we may be able to comfort those who are in any trouble with the comfort with which we ourselves are comforted by God. For as the suffering of Christ abounds in us, so our consolation also abounds through Jesus. Praise God. No matter what you are going through, no matter the tough situation, may God comfort you. May God send you times of refreshing. In the name of Jesus. The Bible says God is our encourager. God is our number one encourager. After us. God is our God of all comforts. So if you stray away from the God of encouragement, you stray away into discouragement. So number one spiritual truth, abide in God. Praise God. No matter the situation, no matter the tough times you're going through, stay connected to God, the God of all encouragement, 
the God of all comfort. Praise God. Find a reason. You know, you may not be where you want to be, but look around and find a reason to praise God. Look around you and see all the things that God has done for you. And you'll be encouraged. Praise the Lord. Encouragement is found in nowhere else. The Bible says God is the God of all comfort. God is the God of all encouragement. And the choir sang, nothing else satisfies like Jesus. I tell you, apart from the Father, there is encouragement in nowhere else. So when we stray away from the Father, we expose ourselves to discouragement and anxiety and depression. So stay in the Father. Keep yourself in God's love. Because he's the God of all encouragement. John 16, 33. John 16, 33. These things I have spoken to you. That in me you may have what? Peace. Encouragement. Peace. Encouragement. These things I have spoken to you. That in me, in me you may have peace. In the world you will have what? Tribulation. But be of good cheer and overcome the world. Peace is found only in God. Encouragement is found only in God. Nowhere else. It's to stray from God. Tribulations. That's what Jesus just said. Men have devoted themselves so much to this world and the world has failed them. Men have entertained themselves in all possible ways on earth and they still feel miserable. Men have tried to fill that void in their spirit with all kinds of exploration. Note the word exploration. I hope you guys listen to the news. Men have tried to fill every empty void in their spirit with all kinds of vices. And it has led to vanity. Some have lost their lives. What pleasure do you get from going to visit where others have perished. What kind of pleasure? You don't know what to do with your money again. When people are suffering. They live in suffering. Jesus said, in me you will have encouragement. In me only you will have peace. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So men have tried all things to fill that void and they are still empty. They are still lonely. Men have tried fame. Men have tried success. Men have tried all kinds of vices. And they are still depressed. First Peter 1. First Peter 1. 18. First Peter 1, 18. First Peter 1, 18. You know that it was not with perishable things such as silver or gold that you were redeemed. From what? The corruptible things. In NIV, can you bring up NIV version, please? NIV version. You know that it was not with perishable things such as silver or gold that you were redeemed from the empty way of life handed down to you from our ancestors. Praise God. Our ancestors handed over to us. The Bible calls it empty way of life. But the Bible says, thank God, Jesus has come to redeem us, to rescue us from an empty way of living. Praise God. In fact, any life, any lifestyle outside Christ Jesus will give you emptiness. The Bible says, we have been redeemed from an empty way of life, handed down to you from our ancestors. We have been rescued. That means outside Jesus Christ, all you get is an empty life. Whatever kind of lifestyle you adopt outside Christ, it leads to emptiness. In fact, Solomon calls it vanity upon vanity. So number one nugget this morning is Stay close to God. Stay plugged to God. Hallelujah. Number two nugget. 
Let to boast in the Lord. Praise God. Let to be braggadocious. Let to boast about the wonders of God. Let to boast. When challenges are confronting you, let to boast about what God has done for you in the past. Let to boast about where God is taking you to. Boast in God. Praise God. Brag about God. Brag about His goodness. Brag about His kindness. Brag about His strength that is available unto you. If you know who you are in Christ, and you know whose you are in Christ, brag about it over situations and circumstances of life. Praise the Lord. 1 Corinthians 1.31 1 Corinthians 1.31 1 Let to boast in the Lord. Therefore, as it's written, let the one who boasts do what? Boast in the Lord. To boast means to talk excessively with pride and pleasure about God's achievements, about God's possessions, about God's ability. So when tough situations are confronting you, learn to brag about your God. That was what David did. When he, Goliath confronted him, he bragged about God. And God said, ah, this guy is setting me up. I have to show up. And God showed up and he defeated Goliath. David bragged about God. And God had to show up and defend himself. Praise God. So when situations are confronting you, learn to brag about the goodness of God. But please note, you must have a personal conviction of the word of God that you are bragging about. Otherwise, it will just be idle words. You must have a personal conviction. You must have faith. You must have an experience with God. I once had a classmate that posted on Facebook, I hide myself under the blood of Jesus. All the plans of the enemy, I destroy by the blood of Jesus. A few weeks later, he was poisoned and he died. If you're bragging about the word of God, you must have faith. If you don't have faith, you know, pastor taught us something last, last week. He told us something in our prayer line. He said, pray to have a personal experience with God. Pray to have a personal experience with God. Don't only say, uh, blood of Jesus, blood of Jesus, when you don't even believe in the blood. Don't be talking about blood of Jesus when you don't even know the efficacy of the blood of Jesus. What do you know about his blood? Do you know what his blood has done? you just mounting it along with the multitude, blood of Jesus. It can't work for you. You need to have a personal relationship with God. You can't brag about your father if you do not know your father. You can't brag about your father if you do not have an intimate relationship with your father. Praise God. You can't boast about your father if you don't know him and he does not know you. Does he even know you? Bible says everyone that calls upon the name of the Lord should depart from iniquity. You can't be bragging about the word of God and you are living in sin. Hallelujah. You must have a personal conviction of God's words or you'll be mounting just idle words. Psalm 23. We don't need to go through that. You know, David encouraged himself. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. See, if you study the book of Psalm 23, you find that David mentioned the word ma seven times. The Lord is ma, shepherd. Ma, seven times. He mentioned the word I, two times. He mentioned the word me, seven times. He had a personal conviction. He had a personal experience with the Lord. He was able to boast before Goliath and his words carried weight because he had an experience with God in the wilderness. So when you declare the word of God, when you declare and brag about the word of God, make sure you are doing it in faith. Your body, soul, and spirit must buy into the word, must believe the word. Praise the Lord. Psalm 44 verse 8. In God we have boasted all day long. Psalm 44 verse 8. 
a God we have boasted all day long. You know, if you are not too careful, boastful people can even intimidate you. Do you know that? If you are not careful, people that boast a lot, they can intimidate you. We were taught in the prayer team that when a lion roars, he is intimidating all the other creatures. Praise God. When the lion roars, he is reaffirming that I am king of this territory. And I dare you, if your mom gives birth to you well, walk into this place. When the, the lion roars, he's, he's sending a warning to all trespassers. Do you know you are a spiritual lion? We belong to the lion of the tribe of Judah. You need to learn to declare the word of God. You need to learn to boast in the word of God. Not in yourself, boast in the strength of God. Psalm 44 verse 8 says, In God we are boasted all day long. Let to boast about God. Hallelujah. We are too quiet as the people of God. I don't know, has anybody ever seen a lion that is gentle? A gentle lion. A gentleman lion. Have you ever seen or heard about a gentleman lion? But we are spiritual lions. We are too quiet. Things are happening to us. Things are happening to us. You need to speak back the word of God. The Bible says the word is nigh me. Even the word of salvation is in your tongue. Speak it. Declare it. Brag about it. For Samuel 17, 45. Then David said to the Philistine, You come to me with a sword, with a spear, and with a javelin. For Samuel 17, 45. But I come to you in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel, whom you have defied. This day, the Lord will deliver you into my hand, and I will strike you and take your head from you. And this day, I will give your carcasses to the camp of the camp of the Philistines to the beds of the air. And the white beast of the earth, that all the earth may know that there is a God in Israel. Hallelujah. Then all this assembly shall know that the Lord does not save with sword or spear, for the battle is the Lord's, and he will give you into our heads. David could boast. All he was doing here was boasting in the strength of God. He carried weight because he had an experience in the wilderness with the bear, with the lion. Pray to have an experience with God. So that when you decree a thing, it shall come to pass. Remember the seven sons of Scythia. They tried to do some stuff with the anointing of Paul and in the name of Jesus. And the demons told them, Paul we know, Jesus we know, who are you? And they overpowered them. Does hell know you? Are you a threat to the kingdom of hell? Are you a threat to the kingdom of hell? God will help us in Jesus' name. Daniel 3.16 Daniel 3.16 Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego They answered and said to the king O Nebuchadnezzar We have no need to answer you in this matter. <laughs> They're not even second-guessing their faith. They're not even compromising their conviction. So we don't even need to answer you in this matter. They were speaking to a king that could kill them. Verse 17, if that is the case, our God whom we serve is able to deliver us from the burning fairy furnace, and he will deliver us from your hand, O king. But if not, let it be known to you, O king, that we do not serve your gods, nor will we worship the good image which you have set up. Out of a whole nation, three young lads that were con convicted in the strength of God, they bragged about God. And God came true for them. One way to encourage yourself is by boasting in the Lord. Numbers 13.30 Then Caleb, Numbers 13.30 Then Caleb quieted the people before Moses and said, Let us go up at once and take possession for we are well able to overcome it. We are well able to overcome it. Caleb and Joshua, among the multitudes, they knew who they were, they knew the God they served, and they bragged about God. 
Praise God. Number three, nuggets. Pray, pray, pray. Praise God. Someone said something. Trouble drives me to prayers. But prayers drive troubles away. Trouble drives me to prayers. But prayers drive the trouble away. We need to pray. When you pray, you encourage yourself. My mindset, my perception is always different after I've prayed over a situation, over a matter. I have more confidence. I have more assurance. Praise God. Ephesians 1, 19 to 21. Ephesians 1, 19 to 21. And what is the exceeding greatness of his power to us, world, who believe? According to the working of his mighty power, which he wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead, and set him at his own right hand in the heavenly places, far above all principality and power and mind and dominion, every name that is named, not only in this world, but also in that which is to come. Praise God. What is he saying? There is nothing that God's power cannot do. The same power that raised Jesus from the dead after three days and highly exalted him, he can take care of any challenge comforting you if you will pray. Look at that scripture. It says, His exceeding great power is towards us that believe. His exceeding great power is for you and I that believe. But you unlock that power only when you pray. That power is deployed only when you pray. If you pray. If you don't pray, the power is not deployed. The same power that raises us from the dead is for you, is for me. But you have to pray to activate it. You have to humble yourself and cry to God to activate it. Praise the Lord. James 5, 16. No prayer is wasted. And the, pray and the power of God is activated when we pray, brethren. James 5, 16, Amplified Version. I'm reading from Amplified Version. The earnest, heartfelt, continued prayer of a righteous man makes tremendous power available, dynamite in its working. When you pray, tremendous power is made available. If you don't pray, power is not unleashed. Praise the Lord. So it's in our hands. That situation confronting us. How long it stays there is up to you. It's up to me. Don't give up in praying. Don't give up. Keep praying. No prayer is wasted. No prayer unto God is wasted. Hallelujah. Someone said, prayers and God's grace are like two buckets in the well. Prayer, God's grace are like two buckets in the well. When one goes up, the other descends. When prayer goes up, grace comes down. When prayer goes up, mercy comes down. When prayer goes up, favor comes down. When prayer goes up, breakthrough comes down. We have to pray. Don't stop praying. You don't have to fast 20 days. It can be three minutes every day. It can be one hour every day. As God gives you grace, praise God. You want to see the kindness of God, the grace of God, the mercy of God. We need to pray. Hallelujah. We need to pray. The Bible talks about coming boldly. Hebrews 4 16. Hebrews 4 16. Let us therefore come boldly to the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Let us come boldly to the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Praise God. The throne of grace is the place of prayer. It's the place of prayer. As much grace you receive is dependent on how often you come to God in prayer. How much mercy you receive is dependent on how often you come to God in prayer. The throne of grace is there for you. It's there for me. We just need to come boldly in prayers. Praise God. Number four, nuggets. Time is going really fast. You know, this is my advice before we go to the next nugget. Don't wait to be perfect before you cry to God. 
Don't wait for perfection before you cry to God. Even if you are dealing with a habit you don't like, come to the throne of grace and ask for help. Even if you are dealing with a sin that you do not like, come to the throne of grace and ask God for mercy. Don't wait for perfection. None of us is perfect. The church is not perfect. We have been perfected. Praise God. Number four, nugget, God loves you. I tell myself a lot. I tell myself a lot. I am God's favorite child. I am God's beloved. Anytime the devil tries to speak bad words, accusations or threats, I tell him back, I am loved of God. My destination is heaven and your destination is a lake of fire. And God loves me. God loves you. There's nothing you will do that will make God love you less. First John 3, 1. Behold what manner of love the Father has bestowed on us that we should be called children of God. What is he talking about here? Even if you are the only person on earth, Jesus will still have died for you. John 16, 27. John 16, 27. John 16, 27. For the Father himself, what? Loves you. The Father himself loves you. Don't be bothered if no one else loves you. The Father himself loves you. The one that matters loves you. The creator of the heavens and the earth, he loves you. That should give you victory over any challenge, every trial. God loves you. God will never forsake you. Praise God. God's love in our life is constant. Romans 8.35 Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation, or distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or peril, as it's written, for your sake we are killed all day long. We are accounted as sheep for the slaughter. Yet in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loves us. Through the love of God we are more than conquerors. Verse 38, for I am persuaded that neither death nor life nor angels or principalities or powers or things present or things to come or height or depth nor any other created thing shall be able to separate us from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Praise God. Brethren, this is one scripture I used to encourage myself. I pray that you will see what I'm saying. Nothing shall separate you from the love of God in Christ Jesus. Your weaknesses or your challenges will not make God love you less. God loves you the way you are. The Bible says, God himself loves you. Tell yourself, God loves me. I'm loved of God. Hallelujah. Don't have a lot of time. God will always provide a glorious way of escape out of all tough situations. First Corinthians 10. No temptation has overtaken you except such as is common to man. But God is faithful who will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you are able. But with the temptation, we also make the way of escape that you may be able to bear it. What is he saying? Every temptation God allows to come your way, every trial God allows to come your way, he has already provided a glorious way of escape. So don't cut corners. Don't throw in the towel. When temptation comes your way, when tough situations come your way, two prayers you should pray. Two prayers you should pray, actually. One, thank God. Because Bible says in everything, what? Give God praise. And two, ask God, show me what I should do. Because the Bible says, with the temptation, with the trial, with the test, he will also make a way of escape. Every situation that comes our way, God has programmed to end in victory. Praise God. Joy cometh in the morning, guys. Every trial has an expiration date. Every challenge has an expiration date. The Bible says God is able to save to the uttermost, and God does not cast away forever. 
Psalm 30 verse 5. For his anger is but for a moment. His favor is for life. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. Every challenge has an end date. So even if you are prayed and the challenge is not moving, be still and know that God is God. Make sure you are busy. Make sure you are doing something productive. In the process of time, you will look back and that challenge has fallen. The challenge is gone. Don't be stagnant. Find something to do while you are waiting for God to come through for you. Praise God. Joy comes in the morning. So the enemy is not all powerful. The enemy is not all knowing because every challenge that comes has a way of escape. The devil may think he's afflicting you, but in that affliction, there's a glorious way of escape for you. So the devil is not all knowing. Praise God. Expect better and thank God. Don't expect the worst because joy comes in the morning. Expect to overcome. Expect to triumph over the situation. And God will see you through in Jesus' name. We don't have time. I will stop here. Can we rise up? Hallelujah. Can we just thank God for the message? Hallelujah. Can we thank God for the message? Thank you, Holy Spirit. Joy comes in the morning. We are loved of God. In the name of Jesus. Our boast is in the strength of God. Nothing shall separate us from the love of God. The love of God is constant with us. Brethren, can we begin to pray for everyone going through tough time in our midst? Can we ask the Lord, God of encouragement, come true for them. Every tough situation in our midst, God of all comforts, we turn into your hands in the name of Jesus. Every tough challenge, every tough circumstances, every tough immigration situation, God of all encouragement, we turn into your hands in the name of Jesus. God of all encouragement, we ask in the name of Jesus, let families be reunited in our midst. In the name of Jesus, let there be favorable immigration news. In the name of Jesus, for everyone going through tough situation, for everyone going through the fire, God of encouragement, we hand them into your hands. Send them times of refreshing. Father, straighten them. Father, uphold them. In the name of Jesus, we will have the last laugh. In the name of Jesus, thank you, Jehovah. Blessed be your holy name. In Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. Hallelujah. Can we put our hands together for the Lord? Hallelujah.